so hi one league of noise podcast we're, we're here with so who's up next uh nice. we're gonna ask them some questions today i'm gonna start uh so what inspired you to start your podcast so i'm a musician myself and i've always wanted to like be in the podcast space i've just been curious about you know what that might look like so i figured a music interview show where i interview you know other it's pretty self-explanatory i don't know what <laughs> anyway <laughs> yeah i thought it would be cool um so um it is and it's yeah. very fun love mm -hmm. the conversations love the different individuals i get to talk to and the network boost is a nice plus so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty cool Glad you're here. It's it's really fun to do. Also stressful, but it's fun. So it is stressful. Welcome. Holy cow! Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> um. So, what is your favorite part of uh, hosting a podcast? Definitely not the editing. That's the least favorite. <laughs> you edit. Um, I do. I have it really edily because I'm like I I don't like ums. I don't like pauses. I'm gonna say a lot of those in this. So mm -hmm. beware. But uh. Okay. But yeah. So. The best part for me is probably just learning people's stories. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I try to, like, I, the way I've branded it right now is, like, it's a deep dive into the minds and processes of these individuals. Mm. And so, uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys do the same thing. Whenever you're picking an artist's brain, it's just cool to walk in their shoes for a bit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and the more you kind of, like, diffuse, I guess, any stress they have and... and yeah, like they welcome you more into their world it just gets cooler and cooler and then by the end of it you're like best buds um mm -hmm. not every time i mean you guys yeah. know that <laughs> certainly not but, oh yeah certainly yeah not. yeah but you know like occasionally you have those those ones where like you walk away from or not walk away but um you know you end the call and it's like wow i think i just made a friend like that's that's gotta yeah. be the coolest part yeah definitely definitely i agree it's the best part i uh, i checked out your blue deputy interview and i could definitely tell you were editing out the ums and i have so much respect <laughs> for that because i could oh not be God. bothered in I appreciate that. yeah um so what can people expect from your show they click on an episode they don't know what to expect pitch it to me right so so who's up next started actually as a music review page and so it evolved into the podcast version which is like very much has the same ethos of like i pay or try to pay as close attention to the music um and like the personality behind whoever i'm speaking with the only mission i have is to just get as deep emotionally spiritually you know whatever you want to call it um as deep as i can get into the artist uh um artist mind let me rephrase there mm -hmm. thank God. you <laughs> I got thank you, you. Deep yeah, into yeah. the artist mind that's going to be a go. clip for you guys later. Dear God. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just exploring their passion is probably the coolest thing to me. And so like, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question adequately, but, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's it what did. I was looking for. Exactly. Good job. Thumbs up. That was great. <laughs> so uh, what guests, artists, bands have you been most excited to have on your show so far? I know you just recently like got into it, but which ones have like made your day so far? Yeah, so there have been a few that really stuck out to me. And so what I've realized is that the older artists that I interview mm -hmm. generally are more well-spoken. You know, they have a bit more world experience. They've yeah. lived a bit longer. They know how to phrase things and mm -hmm. think, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not to discount, you know, any of the younger artists, because I had this one 17-year-old, Louis Jacobs, who I interviewed. He's from the UK. Great dude. Very well-spoken. But just impressed me at... Um, uh, like his rhetoric and then also his actual music as well you know that's why i picked him up i was like this dude's dope let's get him on mm -hmm. um but yeah the one i guess if i could just choose one to maybe say that was like a really really good talk um was probably the grumpy snorlax interview i did mm -hmm. um he's a lo-fi beat maker guy great dude lots of stories to tell um uh later 20s so like he had more stories and things like that and it was just a really smooth talk he also took the liberty of recording on his end too which is really nice, but you know, if we're talking editing, that made the process a little bit longer than usual. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I completely agree with what you said. Like those those Twitter bands that like exist solely on Twitter typically don't have nearly as much to say as like a signed band or even an older DIY band that we interview. So I prefer those interviews. Mm -hmm. We're getting into that. Um, so what band or artists are on your bucket list? Like the ones that you're looking out for, you're like, oh, one of these days I'm going to talk to them. Yeah, Shoot. yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you guys just did a review of Mod Sun's recent album. I 
don't like that album, but I like the <laughs> artist. Yeah. I like the I like. I mean, I think you guys gave it a fair review, mm-hmm. and um, I guess for anyone watching, go check that out too because that was a dope episode you guys did. But thank um, you. Thank um, you. Yeah, I got you. You guys are killing it. But um, Mod Sun for sure, I think would be a really cool artist to talk to, just because um, I think he's older too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure what so, his yeah. age is. Yeah, but he's been you know doing his thing, and he only recently gained steam. Um, you know, uh, uh, like with MGK and like in that kind of sphere, you know, um, with a rap punk route. I think that would just be a really neat interview to pick his mind and learn, you know, what um, talking to homeless people would be like. Because I've I've seen interviews before, and he's just he just seems like a really genuine dude. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. mod son. So we give a very long winded answer. Okay, mod yeah, son. No, okay, that. yeah. The, w- so you didn't like his album what why did you not like his album because we both agreed it was the the porn yeah. star oh oh yeah the mix. So, oh, no. okay. <laughs> okay okay yeah so okay okay so yeah so like as an artist slash producer the mixing mm-hmm. was questionable and that's okay. probably because i don't have enough experience to know what really like sells or whatnot but from okay. what i do know his voice was mixed way too low the yeah. there were there were other things but like i don't know that was just the big one for me um because you know, if you're branding yourself as like a rapper first mm-hmm. before a pop punk artist, generally in rap, it's vocals and then you hear like the snares and hi-hats, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so like to not have that at the very front of the mix was concerning to me. But um, also that yeah. song Porn Star was awful. Yeah. <laughs> got you, guys, awful. you guys got that one. Yeah, that was, uh, that was <laughs> no bueno. But yeah, no, but, but yeah um, it had a few decent ones, but it's not something I'm going to listen to again. Yeah. <laughs> to like yeah, completely completely shit on Modson after I said like <laughs> I want to interview him. Oh my oh god. My Derek Smith, if you're watching this, please I love you, bro. I mean exactly. his, he's doing like the machine gun Kelly core core thing, yeah. I'll call it that pop punk thing, but he's got much better god. vocals than Machine Gun Kelly does yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. So true. Um <laughs> so uh, as you mentioned before, you used to actually review albums on your Instagram account. Uh, which album has you been your favorite to review and what do you look for in a good album? As you said, you review and you uh, produce your own music. So like, what do you nitpick in that type of stuff? Yeah. So here's the problem. I started. So who's up next? The review page when mm-hmm. I was a freshman in college. I'm a senior now. And um, I had only just started producing and learning all these things. So I was kind of speaking out of my ass and to um, <laughs> to a large extent, I'm still doing that. You know, like when I do live yeah. streams and stuff, I'm critiquing music and these kids, they love getting roasted and I don't understand it. It's the weirdest oh thing God. to me. I'll go yeah. in on them on something that I think, you know, it's very subjective, you know, like what you mm-hmm. like. Um, and so ultimately I realized I'm selling my taste and people have respect for that because I'm very assertive and I know what I like. Yeah. Um, so I guess when I'm looking uh, at an album or I guess to backtrack, one of the favorite albums, most favorite albums I reviewed back in the day was um, an Aries album. It was his first and only one out right now. Welcome Home, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't follow him too much anymore. But I, I remember getting uh, like he commented on it or something like that. And I just lost my shit. I was like, this is the yeah. greatest thing. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened for this page. And I had like 200 followers or whatever. I'm only at 300 now. I haven't I've been really slow um because i took a, a big break but um back now uh that was that was a pretty cool um review i did but i don't know what i exactly what i look for it's just I, I mean i'm sure you guys realize this too as you're interviewing artists you know a lot of the merit is in the personalities and the mm-hmm. not necessarily the music but how much of an identity that music holds mm-hmm. and so yeah. when i was listening to the first ever interview i did with a guy called depopulate montana one word great dude I told him straight up, and this is a mistake when I was doing it. I was like, "Hey, I don't, I didn't really um, like your album," and he was like, "All right, oh. fair." But then, I, but then I was like, "Pause, comma, okay, little dot dot dot, mm-hmm. okay." And then I mm-hmm. said, "When I really listened to it, that's when I really began to enjoy it." And mm-hmm. so, what I meant yeah. by that was when I understood who he was, that's when I kind of understood his music. And so, I think listening to anything through that lens is helpful when trying to review. Because you're not, you know, subjecting it to a certain standard. It's just, is it the most it it can be, you yeah. know? So that's kind of what I look for. Okay. That's really sick. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I did that not too long ago with an interview. 
we were interviewing yeah, he, uh, oh my from God. Ashes to New. And I told my the guy dropped. flat out, I was like, yeah, I didn't like your album on first listen at Rough. all. <laughs> and like, but I could tell, like, we were, it's very early into the interview when we asked that question, mm -hmm. the whole like response thing. And I, I could tell though, when we were interviewing them that he wouldn't really care that I had said that. So yeah, he was like, very chill. So yeah, it was yeah. just like, yeah, you gotta feel I, it did out, like the, for sure. I did like the pause. Yeah. I listened to it again after I got the pitch. I promise I liked it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I said yes. If I still Holy hate God. it. Um, gotta, gotta love that pause. Holy yeah. cow. <laughs> so you, you've got a music project yourself. Um, little funny pun here uh so what's up next with that that is my personal project um i go under the moniker and i introduce myself on the show also as justin the flora god um just because that's my artist name i went through a weird plant phase that same year i started so who's up next i had like a bunch of plants in my in my room and it was great um and i couldn't come up with a better name so that's my music project it's kind of like the stuff I have out now is an EP called Wild Things, five, mm -hmm. five track. Um, it's all right. I knew that at this point in time, it would just be all right to me. I knew that going in because um, I knew I could be so much better. Um, and so it's like an indie rock slash pop kind of outfit that I that I did the first time. Um, and but yeah, I'm sitting on what I think is gold. But what I also know in a year from now will be garbage Aww. to me. But yeah. in, the same, in the same way, like, I feel that that's a healthy relationship to have with the art. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a different direction, more leaning towards, like, hyper pop conventions um, uh, and R&B production. Um, like, I have our, I took B-side now, but I had, like, an 808 playing at the same time as a ukulele in one of the B-sides. Mm -hmm. um, but I just have stuff like, um, like a, an acoustic guitar mixed with, like, hi-hats and 808s that you wouldn't really think you'd want to hear but mm -hmm. then i mean i'm biased i think it's great but like <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it's just not a common mix that that you think you'd, you'd want but but yeah so that's that's my little thing i am just in the floor god um and uh yeah that's I, I just i just make music as well as you know entertain the music of others which is super cool I like to be on both sides of that spectrum definitely i just want to say i think that's like the coolest like stage name i it's I don't know. It makes me happy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Um, Sweet. So, where do you see your music, your music project, and your podcast in the next five years? So that's a great question. Because um, while I very much cannot know, um, I also have uh, an idea of how I want things to go. Which is on the podcast side, I just want to divide and conquer as much as possible. Um, I've got some projects in the works that I have to figure out how I'm going to execute. Um, as far as like networking goes and you know i'm trying to be on more podcasts like this because i feel like mm -hmm. it'd be a super cool opportunity to just kind of cross promote and do things like that yeah um and i i want to maintain a presence in the underground slash diy scene because i think that's an important role to play as a i guess platform creator for these artists um but i do want to get into talking to more established ones as well um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of Eric Doa. He's a kind of hyper pop artist mm -hmm. um, who's kind of blown up. He's like, I think he's like 16, something crazy. But oh wow, good for him. But um, yeah, no, he's he's killing it. But um, I had uh, I don't want to say manager because he doesn't manage me. But like the guy who helped me start, so who's up next? The review page way back. Um, he reached out because he's got way more clout than me in like the music space. So he mm -hmm. reached out to Eric Doa. Was talking to him. And then, I don't know, just kind of dropped off the face of the earth. So I thought I was going to talk to Eric Doe for an interview, and then I oh, didn't. But it's fine, dang. because there will be more opportunities in the future. But yeah. um, I definitely want to talk to bigger and better artists. Better? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Quotes around better. I take that back. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> bigger artists with um, larger followings, because, you know, that's just more, that's just strategic uh, yeah. as, a, as a platform as well. Um, but yeah, definitely that. And then for the actual music stuff, um i have okay so the first ep was called wild things the second mm -hmm. one that's coming out is called toll booth the third one's going to be called king prince all Ooh. these names are taken from children's literature if you look behind me where the wild things are is right here um you can't really see it. my webcam is ass but um, <laughs> i take a lot of inspiration from uh from children's literature um mm -hmm. i just like the whimsical nature of it so i try to put that into my music as much as possible I've had the plan for those three projects I just said laid out ever since I made the first one. 
Um, and so it's just about execution now. I went through like the worst writer's block of my life from like last March to December, just recently got over it, just recently finished um, my next EP, the Toll Booth one, that'll be out soon. Um, but yeah, so like in the future, I, I gotta finish that third one, King Prince, after, named after, um, named after, what's it called? Dear God, <sighs> The Little Prince by uh, okay. Anton saint Jus Paris, something like that, he's French. Great book. Um, definitely it'll make you tear up if you read it but but yeah so uh i just want to keep making keep improving production sound quality all these things um but yeah so that's that's what i see for in the future just you know sticking to the grind improving where i can and continuously okay you've oh, got like almost solid. an that's austin good. knight kind of vision to your uh music yeah. project I don't know if you know. I, that, that I don't get well. the reference. I don't. That was me pausing <gasps> to help you fill the space. I'm I'm bad at references apparently. Uh, he's the Wait, front man know. of water parks, and he's got like the whole the band planned out up until breakup. So wow. yeah, that's whoa. What rip? Dude. Yeah. What the heck? He's yeah. Got it all planned <laughs> out. Why? It's that's super cool. Horrible. What? Rip, oh well. Well, that doesn't sound cool. Planning the breakup of the band, but all right. Well, I mean, we still have a couple more years, considering he's doing an album for each um, letter in the alphabet. So it's oh, like, oh, okay, yeah, we're yeah. fine. Yeah. We're just now on G. So like, that's a we, great. I know, right? Yeah. That's crazy. My bad. Mm -hmm. I cut you off. But... Oh no, it's okay. That was there I was done. <laughs> uh, so for the last couple of questions, we're actually going to shift away from your podcast and go straight to death row. Yep. Yep. Boom. Uh, there you go. That that's what I was waiting for. Let's go. <laughs> so we're if here. You're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Okay, so I don't know which episode or what interview I watched recently of yours. Um, you mentioned an Oreo and how the best parts of the Oreo that was were just the, the last bits. podcast one. <laughs> that episode that was the one. Yeah. Okay, so um, so as a joke, I would just say an Oreo with water. But as a more realistic thing, endless breadsticks because I've thought this through, and you can live forever that way. Um, mm -hmm. You would you would need water or some beverage as well to sustain you. But you yeah. can, you know, live the end of your days on the endless breadsticks because they don't, and get this, end. So we're good. <gasps> oh my God. Um, you can kind of cheat death row, I figure. They'll probably not allow that realistically, but one can dream. So mm -hmm. okay. definitely. It's a good loophole. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? I just finished the fifth season of The Magician. Sadly, it's the last season. It's on Netflix. Aww. It's great very mm -hmm. fantasy oriented um but they so it's like the real world and then the magic world um and then in the magic world there's like another world called fillery based off of like a fiction book so like a fiction within a fiction living Whoa. this kind of narnia-esque uh place called fillery which i think would be pretty cool it's full of magic full of fun many mm -hmm. an adventure many different uh exciting things to maybe look at and i don't know it just seems like a cool place all right Solid. That's like the second or third time we've gotten that answer. We don't get that one enough. Really? My mom likes that show. <laughs> it's it's all right. Yeah. I watched it because I started watching it like when it first came out, and I was like, ah, you know, I should probably I should probably see this one through. Yeah, it just felt right. Okay. So I did. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question, and every single person we've spoken to has said that it's the most important question. Mm -hmm. Yep. What's your favorite color? Green, just because it's got to be on brand. I don't really have a favorite color, okay. but I feel like I mm -hmm. can't walk around calling myself the floor god if my favorite <laughs> color isn't green, at least publicly. Yeah. But between yeah. us friends, between us uh, chaps, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite color. That's valid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's valid. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah. So course, as I said, yeah. uh, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Go check out, if you're listening on Spotify, I'm also on Spotify, so who's up next podcast. You already know what to do. Also, if you're curious about my music, look up Justin the Floor God or just Justin the, and it pops up. I found out the other day, which is real oh, nice. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm competing with Bieber and Timberlake. So until you type in that H in the the, I don't pop up, but we're chilling. Wow. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's it. Go check out my stuff. I think it's really cool. I'm biased though. Um, <laughs> also, yeah. just watch more good noise, listen to more good noise. These guys are great. They're killing it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, thank you for now this this has been. Uh, so, who's up next? And we have been yeah. the Good Noise Podcast. <laughs>